This is a build I made this summer. My first castle build since officially becoming one of the castle bros. And this is very much my take on our episode 11 build. This time with a bit more time and uh, with a lot more bricks. This is the joust of Sir Bob and Sir Leon, version 2.0. I only had time to rebuild three builds from the show. A version of our parade float model, the Aztec Temple. Obviously the Sunshine Wagon was resurrected, but of course the highlight of our Lego Masters journey was episode 11 with the cliffhanger challenge. I had to remake this castle. It was gonna be a great way to start out my life as a castle bro. There's a number of similarities between this and the show model, but obviously still quite different. I didn't want this to be the same castle. I wanted to draw on the same ideas, but make something so much bigger and something a little more, how to say this? Most people have told me that it's boring, but I was going to say something more along the lines of a uh, professional, a professional castle. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm leaving it in here. The biggest features that had to stay were the two tiers. The dark orange tier, obviously the most important tier of any castle is the dark orange tier, but also the yellow tier as well. As much as I loved working with classic yellow, which we saw the first castle ever made by the Lego group in, um, I wanted to try out the new cool yellow, a little subtler tone, a little more realistic. Maybe that's the word I was looking for earlier, realistic. Or boring, if you will. It, it is kind of boring compared to the collapsing castle with the fish and all the crazy stuff going on. Oh, I was talking about similarities. The bridge. The bridge was actually the last item I tacked on to this model. Uh, I don't know why I thought I could ever get away with not having it. If this is to be the episode 11 castle, it needs the bridge. So it's again, kind of a funky bridge to nowhere with a very dangerous joust taking place on top. Had to have the callback somewhere. And this seemed like the best place compositionally for it as the castle does seem to be extending out this way. Just made sense in my head. Just like the show model, we've got minifigures all over the place waving their flags. This time I balanced out the red and the white flags a little bit more. The red flag holders obviously being for Team Leon and the blue flag holders being for Team Bob. Team Bob or Team Leon, let me know in the comments. Now, while there's a lot of similarities to the show build, obviously the differences stand out just as much. I had a lot more time to make this. I had about 10 days to build this um, because I was getting married at the end of those 10 days to, to Audrey, who's, who's over there. She's not listening though. Had about 10 days to build this. I had the same process that I did when I built the castle for the show. And that was starting with a very asymmetrical, crazy bottom layout. And this one was especially wild and I had that angled front. And I used the same tower technique uh, just by using hinges. This will not give you perfectly round towers and I'll zoom in on those a little later. That is the one downside of this. None of these towers, except the hexagonal ones, which we'll also break down later, are, are really perfectly rounded out. And when you view it from just these ground angles, I think it's completely fine. You cannot tell that these towers, especially like this one here, it's, it's not round. Again, I would have loved to have had perfectly round towers, but time was not on my side. It never seems to be a wall building, at least not this year. Height was gonna be big with this one too, because on the show, we had this massive, geez, I don't know, that thing was at least six feet tall and it was sitting upon another two foot tall base. It was huge, it towered over all of us. And so the height was there already. This had to create the height itself because I was not interested in doing a whole lot of terrain, especially when I only had a handful of days. I wanted to focus completely on the castle. On the show, I actually made both castles separately from one another. When I had finished the dark orange castle, plopped it on top of Jacob's Bridge and went to work on the yellow part of the castle. This one, however, I really just built on top of. I didn't make two separate castles and smash them together. The reason being on the show, I didn't know how many castles I could get through. I actually had planned to do a light blue 
tier yet on top of that, if time allowed, but Jacob flat out told me no, help me detail the thing. <laughs> and I'm glad he did, because we got some of the really cool details in the end, like the banners with the big L and the big B, and Jacob was cooking up very funny things, like the sunshine wagon barreling off the top of the cliff, which if you don't know about, you should probably watch our video on episode 11, because it's pretty funny. Well, the construction of this building, actually is relatively simple. There's a few tricks I employed to try to make the texture of the wall stand out and look a little more advanced than it actually is. So there's really just a handful of techniques that I went back to time and time again. Masonry bricks are always going to be your friend. They are the easiest way to get that castle texture. They come in like every set now. There's no excuse not to use them. For the dark orange portion of the castle, I didn't have a lot of dark orange masonry bricks, but I did have a ton of medium dark flesh or medium nougat, whatever, masonry bricks available. That gave me the opportunity to not only give the build texture, like physical texture, but also noise texture in the palette. Dark orange and medium dark flesh pair together very nicely. It's a combination I used on the Schloss Jockenberg as well. Rather than having one by two dark orange tiles on top of dark orange bricks, having the medium dark flesh allows it to pop a little bit more. It's an easy way of adding a lot of visual interest to what have otherwise been a very flat dark orange wall. I mean, dark orange is beautiful. And I mean, as far as flat walls go, uh, dark orange is your best bet, but adding texture is going to make it even better. The last bit of texture going on in here is actually streaks of the medium dark flesh utilizing pips, the one by one round plates, as well as some other one by plates in here at varying angles and stuff to almost look like cracks in the wall. But those allowed for a great place to naturally blend in those masonry bricks a little better. This is a little more organic of an approach. Builders use this all the time in castle builds. I think it's fantastic. Um, and it makes a big difference. Since I have so many more tan bricks and just because tan has a much broader portfolio than either medium dark flesh or dark orange, there's an additional few techniques that I was able to use here. My favorite one perhaps being the use of a sideways headlight brick to get a little round stud on the outside of the walls. It's almost like a little rock that's poking out. All this is is the headlight brick placed on its side. There's actually room for a stud on the back. It's just a square opening. And the dimensions of that is perfectly two plates tall. Um, that, that is the genius of the headlight brick. That indent is very, very intentional. The other technique that I employed in the tan sections of the walls is having these little one by two tiles slightly jut out. Those are not jumper plates, actually. That is a one by two tile. Um, so what's interesting about the one by two tile is that it's completely open on the bottom, which means you can slide it back and forth along the stud that it's sitting on. It is not locked into a specific place like a jumper plate would be, which has that specific spot for the stud. I definitely should talk about the towers on this build. So there's two types of towers that I have going on. There's the hinge plate ones, which if you look from above are not that attractive. Uh, They're completely hollow down the middle. They are not circular or not even close to circular or octagonal or anything. They are meant to be viewed from the side. Then there's these towers, these hexagonal ones. There are two of them. Uh, there's the one that's actually built into the wall and there's this other one that I obviously am breaking. This is a really, really cool design. And I have no idea who was the first one to start using this, but I've seen this pop up all over the place on my Flickr. So this utilizes the geometry of the cheese slope, the best brick ever. If you look at the bottom here, you can see what's going on. Basically, we have these bricks with snot techniques on the side of each one, each having a cheese slope. But the angle is such that all of these line up perfectly, absolutely perfectly into this hexagonal shape. There are no gaps like you get with the hinge plates. It is just perfect all the way up. It is an incredible technique. Connecting these walls together can be a bit of a challenge. And I'm not sure how the other builders who have utilized this technique in the past have done it, um, but I did it my super weird janky way. So Lego does produce at least one hexagonal piece that I'm aware of. 
When I look at this piece, I think of two sets in particular. It would be the water wheel from Medieval Market Village, of course, and also the harvester part of the Lego City Combine, probably from pff, a long time ago. Why a Lego City has not revisited a farm sub theme is beyond me. That was probably my favorite Lego City sub theme ever. We got pigs and cows. They were so awesome. One of my favorite Lego City sets ever, Pig Farm. Look it up, it's awesome. You don't have to look it up. I probably just put it right there. It is such a cool set. It came with what, four pigs? Look at the tractor. The tractor is absolutely incredible. The shaping on that engine part is phenomenal. But yes, that, that's what, what I think of when I see these pieces. And so I have some lightsaber blades, not hilts, blades. Yes, I do know the difference sometimes. Using droid arms, was able to connect out to the outer bit of the tower there, and they kind of just wiggle into place. So it's not super duper sturdy. I mean, obviously I can pull them out pretty easily, but I can also manhandle this thing, which is good. There's a lot of cheese slopes used in this build. There wasn't really any rhyme or reason behind that. They just worked really well. Um, I had picked up a bunch of the tan cheese slopes at the pick a brick wall, thank goodness, because there are literally hundreds. One, two, three, four, five, seven, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 30. 38 times 12 on that tower alone. You get the idea, they're on the turrets there. Yeah, there's a lot. I think I should bring up the minifigures as well. For the knights that are found all over the place, I pulled from two of my childhood castle themes, that being kingdoms with the red knights with the lion logo. The blue knights are from fantasy era castle. They, they feature the crown logo. The queen, who's representing the kingdom's knights, is from one of the CMFs. Part of the king, representing the fantasy area castle knights, is from the CMF, um, but the rest of him is actually from uh, the, the main flagship set of that first wave. Perhaps one of my other favorite techniques is these windows, which are really simple. It's using those one by two cheese slopes. And all that's going on here is two snot bricks, there's no special math or anything. It's just a brick in between them. So you get this perfect gap of just a single plate in between them. Then you have two studs gap here and you repeat on the other side. Um, and then it creates that perfect archer slot window that is iconic to so many castles. The door is a technique that I really should stop using and figure out a new one, but uh, it works. So I'm gonna keep doing it. This is a combination of dark brown and reddish brown plates and tiles um, to get a variety of textures in there. I utilize a lot of tiles in the snot construction just because of that extra lip on the bottom, you tend to get just a touch more texture in the door. Photographed in the right light, that looks really good because you can actually see the shadows and those cracks, it's awesome. Photographing this thing actually was probably one of the most enjoyable parts of the building process. I took this outside at golden hour um, and got some really, really cool effects. I spent probably six hours um, in Photoshop cropping out my car, which is in the background. Really had no concerns on taking outside because I was gonna erase all the background anyway. It really didn't matter what it looked like. This build is finished around all sides too, except the top, and we talked about the top. I brought this to Brick World in Milwaukee. That might be the only show it gets to. I might be parting this thing out soon. It's hard to say. I would love to get a little more life out of it, but it takes up all my dark orange, a ton of my tan, and a lot of space. I think this was a worthy, a worthy opener to my time as a castle bro. Wish I could tell you Jacob helped me with this one, but he was busy playing Minecraft. I'm not sure when I'm gonna get around to making my next castle, so I'm gonna impart some final castle building advice to you. We see a lot of rectangular castles. And so my idea with the composition of this was to break that up a little bit by throwing in towers, diagonal walls, all over the place, focusing more on the height rather than the depth of the thing to really give this a striking visual presence. And of course, I mostly strayed away from gray. All of these things are gonna make this castle stand out amidst a hundred other castles that I do. Um, and that's what I encourage you to do as well. Make that base, just like that base that I started out with and make it wild, make it crazy and go from there. 
Don't worry about making it symmetrical or making sure all the corners line up. That's not necessary. A castle like this is so much more interesting, I feel, to look at, to explore. We've all seen castles before. It's one of the classic things to build in LEGO. I am going to continue to build castles forever. But how can you make your castle really something that no one's ever done before? Be zany with it. Make it a joust on a giant bridge. Whatever that is for you, let your imagination run wild and you could produce something pretty awesome. When Jacob and I were able to let go of what we thought a castle had to be, I think we were able to make something truly special that resonated with a lot of people. Um, and at the very least brought a smile to their face. Go make people smile with your castles. You'll be doing a great thing. Well, this has been one half of the Castle Bros talking to you about castles for probably way too long. Thank you for sticking around to the end. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and I will see you in the new year. Bye.